Now the one problem here though is, let's say I click on another exercise, so I want to add a dips. I click on the icon, but it doesn't actually update the form. So what's going on here? Now if you go to form, what we basically did here is set the initial state based on the props. And really it's actually an anti-pattern in most cases, because by doing that, you are basically shooting yourself in the foot. Whenever the properties on the state, so on the application state, change. So for instance, in this case, the exercise is actually being updated whenever I click on another exercise. So in this case, the selected exercise is bench press behind the scenes, but it's not updating the state on the form because the state is static. It's not synced up to the props. It's only being initialized once when you're calling get init state method. So when the form actually mounts. Now, to find more information about this, let's actually head over to react.js.org. And just to make this clear, let's go to docs, let's go to reference. If you click on react component, you scroll down, you're gonna find a section for the constructor and you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. When they describe the pattern that we're actually using for our form, so setting the state based on the props, well, like I said, it's an anti-pattern, but in rare cases, it could actually be useful. The reason it's useful for us is because we're actually using a controlled component. So this form component maintains its own state because I don't really want to update the title when you type into it, right? Because imagine we have an API call that's initiating a put request to the server. Well, what's gonna happen if I actually maintain the state outside the form? Do we want to send the put request on every keystroke? Well, that's not very efficient. So we can keep the state inside the form so you can add it the fields as you want. It's actually not going to update anything on the left pane as long as you don't click on the create. Well, in this case, we're going to change it to edit, but as long as you don't click on the button, the submit button that is, okay? So in this case, going back to the docs, what they suggest doing is, well, if you do want to use this pattern, be careful, of course, because in most cases, it's easier to lift up the state to the parent, but in this case, we actually have a controlled component, a form that maintains its own state, like I said. So to make it work in the end, what we need to do is we actually need to add this component will receive props lifecycle method. And inside of it, we can actually get the next props and we can actually update the state based on those props. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to create the lifecycle method. Components will receive props. It's going to receive the next props. And in fact, I don't care about any other props except the exercise object. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to call set state and I'm going to extract out all of the properties of the exercise on the state. So that's going to update the title, the description, as well as the muscles. So now let's say I select bicep curls and then I switch to, let's say, bench press, that's of course going to update the form. And that's gonna happen because of the component will receive props because we're basically listening to the update, to the new props, we're grabbing the new props and we're basically updating the state with those props. So we're sort of like syncing the props with the state on the form component. And that's how it's gonna work. Now, like I said, the label of the button is a bit awkward. It's always create, that's because we hard coded the create value in there. What we can actually do is we can actually check if we have an exercise, so the initial exercise on the props. If we do, we know that we're dealing with an existing exercise that needs to be edited. Otherwise, we can default to create as the label for the button. So in this case, I click on the plus icon. The label is going to be create, but if I want to add it something, because we do have the exercise selected, it's going to display the edit label. And then in fact, for the exercise, of course, to keep up with the pattern that we've been using, we can extract the exercise or destructure it off the props without actually referencing this props directly. Now, going back to handle submit method. So what's happening here is in the past, we wanted to add the ID property to the newly created exercise object. And that's because when you fill out the form to create an exercise, you would have the title, you have description and the muscles, but you're not gonna have the ID. That's why we had to add the ID manually. But if you're editing an existing exercise, it's actually not the case because the ID is already going to be available on the props. In fact, 
it's actually going to be available on the state as well because we are signing the whole exercise object on the state. So what we can do here is we can set the ID first and then extract out all the properties of the exercise. And the exercise is coming from the state. And if we do have the ID on the state, that's going to overwrite this ID property as well. Let's try editing something. I'm going to click on overhead press. Overhead press for shoulders, let's say. Let's click on edit. And in this case, it's complaining about the title property. Oh, and that's because there's no exercise object in the state. Now we have the properties of the exercise directly in the state. We don't have the exercise property as such. So this statement makes no sense. I'm just going to delete it. What we're going to do instead is we're going to grab the title of the state directly. And then instead of referencing the exercise, I'll reference this state. So that's going to extract all the properties of the state to a new object. Overriding the ID, if that's the case, like I said, if we do have an exercise that's currently being edited, otherwise it's going to add the ID property because we don't have the ID on the state. And that's the case when you create a new exercise, when you click on the plus icon. And then lastly, instead of passing the new object to set state like that, we're actually going to reference this get initial state. And this would be useful for the situation when you actually create a new exercise. So that's going to clear out the fields because the get init state is actually going to return an object with all those fields set to empty strings like that. Like I said, this is going to clear out the form in the model when you create an exercise. But if we try to edit something, so let's say overhead press, I'm going to call it overhead press for shoulders. Let's click on edit. As you can see here, the title is being updated, but the problem is the title is not being updated on the form component for some reason. And the reason that's happening is if you go back to app.js, when we call handle exercise edit, we are not updating the currently selected exercise. So the problem is the currently selected exercise keeps the same value of the title, muscles, and description, just like before. But in case we're actually editing the exercise, we also need not to forget to update the selected exercise as well. So I'm just going to pass the exercise that's going to overwrite the exercise property over here. It's going to update it to a brand new object that's coming from handle exercise edit handler method. So now if I edit something, so let's edit the description an awesome delt exercise edit. And now if I click on, let's say bench press, clears out the form. If I click back on overhead press, that updates the description, but maybe I want to change the category to let's say back. Now I'm going to update the title to dumbbell rows. This would be an exercise, a super awesome exercise for your back, something like that. Edit. So it updates the title, updates the description as well, but everything else works just exactly like before. You can also delete it. You can go back to something else. But if you noticed there for a second, it actually kept the exercise selected. So the one thing that we need to do though is when we actually delete an exercise, we have to set the edit mode to false because if I were to continue trying to edit the title or description or whatever, it's going to try to reference an exercise that's no longer existent. But we also need to update the selected exercise to an empty object as well. So let's try to update the overhead press. I'll change it to barbell press. Click on edit. That's going to update the exercise. But if I click on delete, that's going to set the edit mode to false. So you don't see the form, but it's also going to set the exercise to an empty object as well. And then the same thing also needs to happen for when you actually select a new exercise. So for example, if I click on edit for dips and I click on the list item for pull-ups, that's actually going to update the selected exercise. But what if we just wanted to see the details of that exercise, not necessarily editing it out. If I want to edit it out, I would need to click on the edit icon specifically. So to fix that, what we can do here inside of handle exercise select, this one's responsible for handling the use case when you select an exercise. What we can do inside is we can actually set the 
edit mode to false as well. So to show you the scenario, once again, I click on edit for bench press, but then I click on barbell curls as the list item itself. I just basically see the details for that exercise. So I don't necessarily want to edit it out. If I want to edit it, I'd have to click on the edit icon. There's one thing we did forget though. So let's say I create a new exercise. I'm gonna call it leg raises. This would be for your legs, of course. We can skip the description. When I click on create, it's gonna clear out the form, but it's actually not going to close out the model because we forgot to update the state on the model by calling the handle toggle. Although it does create the exercise and we can then see the information about it, we can also update the title or description to anything else we want. And of course that's gonna work. If I go back to the exercise, everything is being updated. But like I said, the dialog is not being closed. So one thing we can do here is instead of calling the onCreate, let's actually call a local method. We're gonna call it handle form submit. So I'm gonna create that method, handle form submit. That method is going to have a callback function which will expect the exercise object. And then inside of the callback, we're gonna call this handle toggle. This is going to update the property of open on the dialog. So it's gonna close it off. And then finally, we're gonna call this props on create with the exercise object. So if I save it, let's try creating the exercise again. This will be leg raises. This will be for your legs. Okay, description, let's leave it off. You create it, that's gonna add the exercise to the legs category. And then it's also going to close off the modal just like we would expect. And then finally, the onCreate property here is unnecessary, so we can get rid of it. And then I also noticed we used to have an area label, I believe. But for now, we can just kill the ID because it's no longer relevant. So that's about it for your review as far as forms and input controls and dialogues and all that stuff. So I know it's kind of a lot for a single video, but we did a lot of refactoring and I think at this point, this would be a good place to stop. And in the next video, we're actually going to dive deep into styling and theming in Mature UI. So I hope to see you then and enjoy the rest of your day.